Krishna Karuna Sindho Dina Bandho Jagat Pate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastute Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Today we are going to study Bhagavad Gita chapter 9 verse number 16 Aham kraturaham yajna svadhaham aham aushadham mantroham aham evajyam Translation But it is I who am the ritual, I the sacrifice, the offering to the ancestors, the healing herb, the transcendental chant. I am the butter and the fire and the offering. So in this verse, Krishna is talking about himself and uh, he's saying when you when you do all these things that are prescribed in the Vedas like uh, he mentions here the sacrifice it actually refers to a particular kind of sacrifice which is performed in India there well there's many sacrifices but uh, one very common one for example is called the fire sacrifice and uh, it's a very complicated ritual which has many natural ingredients and it's performed in a fire which is offered different ingredients successively and prayers and things like that and it is meant to please God. So uh, if you study Vedic culture deeply, if you, if you go to India and you understand many of the rituals that are performed by priests over there, and the festivals, when people celebrate, there's so many festivals all the time. And if you trace back the origins of all these festivals, if you go back to the songs that were in movies 50 years ago, uh, anything that was performed publicly or uh, in a movie or sacrifices or any kind of rituals, they were all, all <laughs> linked to God. They were offered in in one way or another to to uh, for spiritual elevation. So they were uh, extremely purifying. They were all elevating, and that is the the, the principle of Vedic culture. So here, uh, Krishna is talking about different processes of Vedic culture, and he's saying, "I'm I'm all of those because if you do those any of those things, the the whole purpose." for them is to remember me and uh, it has some of my qualities so when you focus your spiritual life in loving God even though you may not perform every single ritual prescribed in the Vedas which is uh, a big amount or every single rule and every single instruction because there are many 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 instructions on how to perform your daily activities although you might not be able to do all of them in fact it's very very difficult uh, when your objective is to love God then all these things are automatically awarded when you have love of God then automatically it's like you're performing all these sacrifices and you're uh, you're doing all these pious and uh, spiritual activities to please God so this is the, the wonderful potency of love of God that without getting very entangled in, compl in complicated procedures, rituals, man mantras and all these things, one can simply develop love, pure love, and this pure love covers the soul of, of all the duties and all responsibilities in this world. It is mentioned here, uh, the, several items, one of them is I am the healing herb and this is uh, part of 
Krishna's or God's special mysterious potencies. Recently I got a little fever and cough and things like that and I was uh, in bed with a very strong headache. And I, I, I'm very adverse to taking Western medicine because it's not very intelligently designed. It's pretty much just kill everything. So I was tolerating the pain and then my neighbor came and uh, he told me, oh, there's a herb just outside your your bedroom and just cut a little bit of that and, and that will heal your your headache. And indeed, I just took I just took a little little uh, leaf, a bunch of leaves, and within ten minutes the big headache was gone. So, God has similar similar mysterious ways of working. You would think, oh, uh, how is it possible that all my life is uh, upside down, and then I start worshiping God, and suddenly everything is fixed, and many mysterious things happens happen as you perform your spiritual life that suddenly you need something or there is a certain goal to achieve and then it seems impossible but just by some wonderful arrangement <laughs> someone behind the curtain well he he moves the strings and then the goal suddenly becomes very easy so this is part of god's mysterious qualities and he's saying in this verse and other verses, so I am the healing herb, I am the transcendental chant. If you, if you participate in any of the Vedic sciences, you will see that they're all very strongly uh, based or they have a very strong foundation on a godly spiritual ritual. When you go, for example, on Ayurvedic treatment, uh, Ayurveda is a science of medicine. So in, in Ayurveda, it's all based on herbs, natural remedies, and uh, there's very, very wonderful knowledge on all these herbs. And uh, when you study Ayurveda and you see how it is applied and all these things, it's always in consciousness of God. That you take a medicine and then you, you offer certain prayers, or you have a certain ritual that will always remind you of God. And that is the, the amazing quality of Vedic culture. I can't find any other culture in the world that not only has a religion part to it, but that every single aspect of science, which is from medicine, architecture, I mean, literally anything, anything that's included in the Vedic scriptures, uh, has always this, this amazing point of view in which everything is dedicated to God. If you're going to build a house, there's a particular section in the house in which there's an area for worshiping God. And it is considering nature and uh, the perfect flow of energies within the house. And if you happen to miss that balance, then you have a very difficult lifestyle or your family is always in trouble or you're always sick and then always a problem. And if you have this knowledge, not only you have a very easy material life but you always remember God. So all these Vedic sciences and all these transcendental chants which are mantras and the fire sacrifices and all these rituals they're all meant to remember God. And for one who is more advanced that already is fallen or uh, fallen in love with God or completely absorbed in thoughts of God there is no strict need to perform all these rituals. Automatically, all his activities will be pure and devotional. And that is uh, the perfection of yoga or the perfection in bhakti yoga. So spiritual life is, is always uh, tinged by this, these qualities that whatever you're doing, uh, whatever, if you're building a house, you're growing a garden, you're going to a job, whatever you're doing, Always try to engage that activity with the consciousness that it's going to be offered to God or that God is the center, that I'm doing this for God. And, and then you will see that automatically you will experience the Vedic way of life in which your mind, your health, your, your state of being just improves 
over time more and more and it's it just gets better and better if you have any comments or questions please visit our website thevedicway.org thank you Hare Krishna Oh, <laughs>